This is the story of early Singapore, or as it was known back then, Singapore. Our journey begins 700 years ago. Southeast Asia is a world of winding waterways with ancient empires like Sri Vijaya and Majapahit. As Sri Vijaya crumbles, a string of port cities rise along the Straits of Malacca. Our story begins with Sang Nila Utama, a young prince from Palembang, sanctified as Sri Tri Buana, Lord of the Three Worlds. Miraculously steer Sang Nila Utama to the island of Tamasi. his lion home and renames it Singapore or Lion City. Sang Nila Utama establishes and builds a thriving kingdom and reigns for the next 48 years until his death in 1348. As many as 10,000 people are living here in Singapore during this first glorious period of her history. The next ruler to impact the fate of Singapore is Parameswara, whose rise to power remains a point of contention to this day. In one historical account, Parameswara is a Palembang prince who flees to Singapore after a failed rebellion, but returns to kindness by killing his host and taking over the throne. Or shall we remember him instead as Iskandar Shah? believed to be the direct descent of Samila Utama. Despite his strong rule, he struggles to make Singapore flourish. The port is crippled by stormy squalls, smashing into the harbour, lashing and ripping apart ships more than. Singapore is dubbed a false Timora, or a false sanctuary by the Portuguese. But what causes Iskandar Shah's eventual downfall appears to be a personal vendetta. He accuses a concubine of adultery and he humiliates her in public. This leads to the woman's father, Iskandar Shah's chief minister, exacting revenge by plotting with enemy forces from Majapahit. Forced to flee for his life, Iskandar Shah heads north, finding refuge in Malacca. Thus, the kingdom of Singapore loses the last of its five kings, dimming the island's first golden age. But Iskandar Shah starts afresh by founding the Malacca Sultanate, establishing it as one of the most important in Southeast Asia. As Malacca's fortunes continue to rise, China takes a keen interest in this region, sending Admiral Junka to explore opportunities. Ming China formalizes relationships with Malacca and grants it protection from Ayutthaya and Majapahit forces. Meanwhile, Singapore grows in strength alongside Malacca as a vital naval base with Orang Lao warriors and powerful cruisers. Halfway across the globe, the rounding of the Cape of Good Hope draws a new wave of voyages to Southeast Asia, signaling the European age of discovery. The Portuguese arrive and seize Malacca in a bloody battle. The Sultan of Court is forced to move to modern-day Johor. Singapore returns to the landmark as a base of anti-Portuguese resistance and also a Shabandari, or trading post. 
bend the Dutch alliance, breaking the Portuguese stronghold in this region. An incident in Macau where 17 Dutch sailors are executed by Portuguese triggers retaliatory attacks. In Singapore, a Dutch explorer named Admiral Jacob van Heemskerk ambushes Portuguese ships laden with goods from China and Japan. He prepares an unprecedented plunder of the Santa Catarina, a ship filled with precious cargo of musk, Chinese raw silk, and porcelain. The Santa Catarina and its cargo are taken back to Europe, where it stirs up even greater interest in the wealth and promise of Southeast Asia. The incident opens a relationship between the Dutch and the Johor Sultanate. Watching this battle between the Dutch and the Portuguese is Archie, where the Sultan has been expecting the chaos to worsen to his political advantage. When that does not happen, Archie decides to launch an attack on Johor. Over 20,000 warriors are dispatched by sea to attack Johor and Singapore. The modern warriors in Singapore fiercely loyal to Sultan put up a desperate defense.